from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston. It's the Cube, covering IBM Think. Brought to you by IBM. Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante of the Cube. Welcome back to the continuous coverage that we're running here of the IBM Think Digital 2020 experience. I'm with Ritika Gunner, who's a longtime Cube alum. She's the vice president for data and AI expert labs and learning. Ritika, always a pleasure. I wish we were seeing each other face to face in San Francisco, but you know we'll have to make the best. Always a pleasure to be with you, Dave. So listen, um, we last saw each other in Miami uh, at an IBM you know, data event. You hear a lot of firsts in the industry. You hear about cloud first, you hear about data first, you hear about AI first. Um, I'm really interested in how you see AI first. I mean, customers, they want to operationalize AI. They want to be data first. They see cloud you know, as basic you know, infrastructure to get there, but ultimately they want insights out of data and that's where AI comes in. What's your point of view on this? I think any client that's really trying to establish how to be able to develop a AI factory in their organization so that they're embedding AI across the most pervasive problems that they have in their org, they need to be able to start first with the data. That's why we have the AI ladder where we really think the foundation is about how clients organize their data, collect their data, organize their data, analyze it, infuse it in the most important applications, and of course use that whole capability to be able to modernize what they're doing. So we all know to be able to have good AI, you need a good foundational information architecture. And thus, a lot of the first steps we have with our clients is really starting with the data, doing an analysis of where are you with the data maturity? Once you have that, it becomes easier to start applying AI and then to scale AI across the business. So unpack that a little bit. I mean, talk about some of the, the critical factors and the ingredients that are really necessary to be successful. What are you seeing with customers? Well, to be successful with a lot of these AI projects, I mentioned it starts with the data. And when we comes to those kind of characteristics, you would often think that the most important thing is the technology. It's not. That is a myth. It's not the reality. What we found is some of the most important things start with really understanding and having a sponsor who understands the importance of the AI capabilities that you're trying to be able to drive through a business. So do you have the right hunger and curiosity across your organization? from top to bottom to really embark on a lot of these AI projects. So that's the cultural element I would say that you have to be able to have. And that embeds within it, like the skills capabilities that you need to be able to have, not just by having the right data scientists or the right data engineers, but by having every person who's going to be able to touch these new applications and to use these new applications, understand how AI is going to impact them. And then it's really about the process piece. You know, I always talk about AI is not a thing, it's an ingredient that makes everything else better. And that means that you have to be able to change your processes. Those same applications that had DevOps processes to be able to put it in production need to really consider what it means to have something that's ever changing like AI as part of that, which is also really critical. So I think about it as it is foundation in the data, the cultural changes that you need to have from top to bottom of the organization, which includes the skills, and then the process components that you need to be able to change. So you're really talking about like DevOps for, for AI, data ops, I think is a term that's going to gaining popularity. I think you guys have applied some of that in, internally, is that right? Yeah, it's about the operations of the AI lifecycle and, and how you can automate as much of that as possible, apply mm -hmm. AI there as much as possible. And that's where a lot of our investments in the data and AI space are going into. How do you use AI for AI to be able to automate that whole AI life cycle um, that you need to be able to have in it? Absolutely. So I've been talking to a lot of CXO, CEO, CIOs. We've held some uh, CISO and CIO roundtables with our, our data partner, ETR. And one of the things that's that's clear is they're accelerating certain things as a result of COVID-19. Uh, they're certainly much more receptive to cloud. Of course, the first thing you, you heard from them was 
a, a pivot to work from home infrastructure. Many folks weren't ready. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing that they've said is even in some hard hit industries, we've essentially shut down all spending with the exception of, of very, very critical things, uh, including, interestingly, our digital transformation. And so they're still on that journey. They realize the strategic imperative uh, and they don't want to lose out. In fact, they want to come out of this stronger. AI is a critical part of that. So I'm wondering what you've seen mm. specifically with respect to the, the pandemic and customers, how they're approaching AI, whether or not you see it accelerating or sort of on the same track. What are you seeing out there with clients? You know, this is where um, in pandemics, in areas where, you know, we face a lot of uncertainty. I am so proud to be an IBMer. Um, we actually put out an offer when the pandemic started um, in the March timeframe to many of our organizations and communities out there um, to be able to use our AI technologies to be able to help citizens really understand how COVID-19 was going to affect them. What are the symptoms? Where can I get tested? Will there be school tomorrow? And we've helped hundreds of organizations um, and not only in the public sector and the healthcare sector, across every sector, um, be able to use AI capabilities like what we have with Watson Assistant to be able to understand how COVID-19 is impacting their constituents. As I mentioned, we have hundreds of them. So one example was Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, where they wanted to be able to create an assistant to be able to um, help parents really understand what symptoms are and how to handle um, diagnoses. So we have been leveraging a lot of AI technologies, especially right now, to be able to help um, not just citizens and other organizations in the public and healthcare sector, but even in the consumer sector really understand how they can use AI to be able to engage with their constituents a lot more closely. And that's one of the areas where we have done quite a bit of work and we're seeing AI actually being used at a much more rapid rate than ever before. Well, I'm excited about this because, you know, everybody talking about the recovery, what does the recovery look like? Is it V-shaped? You know, nobody really expects that anymore, but maybe a U-shape. But the big concern people have is, you know, this W-shaped recovery. And, and I'm hopeful that machine intelligence and, and data can be used to just help us really understand the, the risks uh, uh, and, and, and also getting out good quality information, I think is, is critical. Different parts of, of the country and the world are gonna open at different rates. We're gonna learn from those experiences and we need to do this in near real time. I mean, things change. Certainly they were, for a while, they were changing daily. They, they kind of still are. You know, maybe we're on a, a slower, maybe it's, a, it's, it's you know, three or four times a week now. But that pace of change is critical and, and you know, machine, machines are the only way to keep up with that. I wonder if you could comment. Well, machines are the only way to keep up with it. And not only that, but you want to be able to have the most up-to-date, relevant information that's able to be communicated to the masses in ways that they can actually consume that data. And that's one of the things that AI and a lot of the assistant technologies that we have right now are able to do. You can continually update and train them such that they can continually engage with that end consumer and that end user and be able to give them the answers they want. And you're absolutely right, Dave, like in this world, um, the answers change every single day. And that kind of workload um, and, and demand, you know, you can't leave that alone to human laborers. Even human, human laborers need an assistant to be able to help them answer because it's hard for them to keep up with what the latest information is. So using AI to be able to do that is absolutely critical. And, and I want to stress, you know, I said machines, you can't do it without machines, and I believe that, but machines are a tool uh, for, for humans to ultimately make the decisions in, in a crisis like this. Because you see, I mean, I know we have a global audience, but here in the United States, you, got, you have 50 different uh, governors making decisions about when and how, certainly the federal government's putting down guidelines. But the, the governor of Georgia is going to come back differently than the, the governor of, of New York, different from the governor of California. They're going to make different decisions and they need data and, and AI and machine intelligence will inform that. Ultimately, their public policy is going to be dictated by a combination of things, which obviously includes you know, machine intelligence. Absolutely. I think we're seeing that, by the way, 
they, I think many of those governors have made different decisions at different points, and therefore their constituents need to really have a place to be able to understand that as well. Well, you know, you're right. I mean, the, the citizens ultimately have to make the decision. Well, the governor said it's safe, safe to go out, but you know, I'm going to do some of my own research. And and you know, just like if you're if you're investing in the stock market, you got to do your own research. It's your health, and you have to decide. And to the extent that uh, firms like IBM can provide that data, I think it, it's it's critical. Where does the cloud fit in all this? I mentioned the cloud before. I mean, it seems to be critical infrastructure to get information Absolutely. out fast and scale. Talk about that. All of the capabilities that we have, they run on the IBM cloud. And I think this is where, you know, when you have data that needs to be secured and needs to be trusted, and you need these AI capabilities, a lot of the solutions that I talked about, the hundreds of implementations that we have done over the past um, just six weeks, if you kind of take a look at it, six to eight weeks, all of that on the IBM public cloud. And so cloud is the thing that facilitates that and it facilitates it in a way where it is secure, it is trusted, and it has the AI capabilities that augment it. Ritika, there's learning in your title. Where do people go to, to learn more? How can you help them learn about AI and how, how to get, get started or keep going? Well, um, you know, we think about a lot of these technologies as it isn't just about the technology, it is about the expertise and the methodologies that we bring to bear. You know, when you talk about data and AI, you want to be able to blend the technology with the expertise, which is why our my title is expert labs that come directly from the labs. And we take our learnings through thousands of different clients that we've interacted with, working with the technologies in the lab, understanding those outcomes and use cases and helping our clients be successful with their data and AI projects. Um, so we th that's what we do, that's our mission. Love doing that every day. Well, I think this is important because I mean, a, a, a company, an organization the size of I, IBM, a lot of different parts of that organization. So I would, I would ad advise our audience to challenge IBM and say, okay, you've got that expertise. How are you applying that expertise internally? I mean, I've talked to Indipal Bandari about how, you know, the, the data science is being applied within IBM, how that's then being brought out to, to customers. So you've actually, you've got a Petri dish inside this massive organization. And it sounds like, you know, through, the you know the expert labs and sort of learning centers. You're sort of more than willing to and aggressively actually sharing that with clients. Yeah, I think um, it's important for us to not only eat our own dog food. So you're right, Interpol, um, the CIO office, CTO office. We absolutely use our own technologies to be able to drive the insights we need for our large organization. And through the learnings that we have, not only from ourselves but from other clients, we should help clients, our clients and, and our communities and our organizations uh, progress their use of their data and their AI. We really firmly believe this is the only way not only these organizations will progress, that society as a whole will progress. So we feel like it's part of our mission, part of our duty to make sure that it isn't just a discussion on the technology. It is about helping our clients and the community get to the outcomes that they need to using AI. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you invoked the dog fooding, you know, because you know we use that terminology a lot. And a lot of people, the marketing people, sit back and say, "No, no, it's sipping our champagne." Well, to get to champagne <laughs> takes a lot of work, and the, the grapes at the early stages don't taste that. Good. There's a pain that you have to go through, and so that's why I think it's a sort of an honest uh, metaphor. Uh, but but Ritika, it's, you, you, you've been a friend of the cube. We've we've been on this data journey together for many many years. I really appreciate you coming on. Back on the Always cube a pleasure. And, and sharing with the Think audience. Great to see you, stay safe, and uh, hopefully we'll see you face-to-face -face soon. All right, thank you. All right, take care, my friend. And thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube. You're watching IBM Think 2020, the digital version of Think. We'll be right back right after this short break.